Central School. It's Mrs. Hewing here with another edition of Central School Book Talks. So today is the final installment of the 2019 Blue Stem nominated award books. So I want to talk to you about the last seven books. Remember, in order to vote for your favorite Blue Stem book in February, March, you have to have read at least four of the books nominated for the Blue Stem Award. All right, so first up, we have The Secret Subway, written by Shanna Corey, and the pictures in this one are fabulous, and I wanna to talk to you about that in just a little bit. The pictures are done by Red Nose Studio. So, this is called The Secret Subway, and it is actually a nonfiction picture book about the man who had the very first idea to create a subway in New York City, and you can see busy crowded New York City not much room on the streets now what I love about this book is the pictures the pictures in here are done through claymation now what that means is the studio who created this book and created these illustrations actually took clay modeled clay formed it and put pieces together to show all the different characters and what was happening and then took photographs of each of those scenes made out of clay and then put the photographs together to make all the illustrations for this book. So much work went into creating these pictures that it is fabulous and amazing. But it's really kind of an interesting story about how this man had an idea to create the secret subway system under the city. He didn't want anyone to know about his idea to steal his idea or stop him because he was afraid that there were some people in the city who wouldn't want this to happen. So he kept everything very hush hush and it was a secret. He didn't even tell some of the people who were investing in it and giving him money for this project what it was all about. This is a fabulous book about how the subway first came into being. After that, I have a wonderful story called The Story of Diva and Flea, as told and shown by Mo Willems and Tony DiTerrilizzi. Now, Mo Willems, most of us know from like Elephant and Piggy, but it's a fabulous story, a little bit different though. In this book, we have Diva. Now, Diva is this beautiful little dog who has never left her courtyard. She likes her nice, simple little life and what she's got in her apartment apartment and just the grass right outside of her. Now here you have Flea. Flea is just an alley cat and he's explored the city in every single part. One day the two of them come to meet each other and Diva's not so sure about Flea and Flea really doesn't like how Diva-ish Diva is. But an unusual friendship blooms between the two of them. Fabulous story about friendship and getting outside of your comfort zone a little bit to explore and find something new. After that, we have A Tangle of Knots by Lisa Graff. Now, this is a great story about a girl named Caddy. Caddy is an orphan. She really doesn't have much family, but that's okay. She loves her life that she leads in the orphanage. Now, the setup of this book presumes that most people are born with a talent a secret hidden talent that they are just magical and fabulous about. And Caddy's talent is she can look at any single person and know exactly what kind of cake they need just to be happy. And she is a fabulous baker. Through a series of events, lots of different happenings, Caddy sets off on an adventure that inv involves a hot air balloon, a baking contest, and a talent thief, a man who can find people with these talents and steal them from each other. Along the way, Caddy, of course, is able to find what she's always wished for her whole life, a true family. Up next is Ugly by Robert Hogue. Now this is a memoir. memoir. Robert Hogue is telling us about what it was like for him when he grew up. Now, Here's a photo of our author, Robert Hogue. He was born with some physical disabilities and some physical deformation on his face. And he talks just about what it was like, the surgeries he went through, how kids treated him, how even adults treated him, and what he had to do to be accepted. Um, this is a kind of like a true story wonder. Um, great book, I really think you'll enjoy this one. 
Up next is What Was the Great Chicago Fire by Janet B. Pascal. I don't think I need to tell you too much about this one because you guys love the Who Was books. Well, this is just a, an edition of What Was, and it tells you all kinds of facts about the Great Chicago Fire. Was it really started by Mrs. O'Leary's cow? And how come the fire spread so much? What was the city like during that time? Lots of nonfiction information, great information, and history. If you're a history person, you will love this book and definitely the rest of this series. I have another picture book for you. Whoosh! Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream to Inventions, written by Chris Barton and illustrated by Don Tate. So this is the nonfiction biography of Lonnie Johnson, the inventor of the super soaker. Now every kid out there knows the super soaker and loves it. Lonnie Johnson grew up and he wanted to invent and he dreamed of building things, designing things. Most of his inventions, I'm sorry to say, did not turn out successfully, but the one invention he is known for is the super soaker. So it's a great story about how Lonnie Johnson grew up to become famous even though he had a lot of hardships in his life and didn't always have much money. And the last blue stem book is Wish by Barbara O'Connor. Now this one I'm going to tell you was kind of a sad book a little bit. Um, right here we have Charlie Reese and Charlie's life has not always been easy. Unfortunately, because of situations in her family, Charlie can no longer stay with her mom and older sister. Um, her dad's in prison and Charlie has to go live with this aunt that she's never met and never really heard of. She's extremely jealous and extremely upset because her sister gets to stay in what she feels like is her whole old life and Charlie's very sad because the only thing she wants is her family. As a matter of fact, every day she makes a wish. She has a million ways to make wishes. You can make wishes when the clock turns 11-11. You can make a wish on a star. You can make a wish on a dandelion. You can make a wish on an eyelash. She knows every possible way to try to make a wish and the only thing she wishes for is for her family. So, throughout the story though, Charlie finds and sees this stray dog running around the town where her aunt lives and she names this dog Wishbone and she knows that Wishbone needs her to take care of him. She and Wishbone are kind of a lot alike. They both just need a family and a home. It's a fabulous, fabulous story about friendship and family and finding out where you belong and what you truly want. I highly recommend this book. I loved it. All right, so that's all 20. If you've watched all three of these videos, you've now heard about all 20 books. I am so excited that we have these books for you this year. Um, the Illinois Reading Council actually gave us a grant so we could get all the books here in the school library. Make sure you have read four books in order to vote. Um, I'm kind of jealous of you guys. Teachers and adults don't get a chance to vote. You have to be a third, fourth, or fifth grader to vote. I'm not really sure I know which one I would choose though. There's so many great books. So go ahead and let me know which one you think is the best. I can't wait for March when we all get to find out what the favorite was though for the state of Illinois. All right guys, that's a lot more books. I can't wait to hear what you're reading. Thanks.